guys. Uh, but again, everybody, thank you for joining us for the Tamer King of Dinosaurs Book Nine Kickstarter release. Um, whiskey sipping. <laughs> what is everyone drinking? I know it's Monday, but hopefully you're drinking something. Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking strawberry lemonade with vodka in it. That sounds delightful. It's what kind of vodka? Quite refreshing. Uh, just kettle. Mm. So it's good. Is nice. that your favorite kind of vodka? Yeah, it's nice. It is nice. Nice. Um, I think that we should start out by kind of discussing, um, you know, what we kind of learned from obviously Tamer 8, but also I think more importantly, what we've kind of changed with the Kickstarter this time around, specifically the add-ons and, uh, you know, how those work and why we went that route and, you know, really, you know, why we, you know, especially because we took in consideration and everybody's feedback for the last couple of Kickstarters and, you know, always trying to do better for you guys. Um, and hopefully you guys see that. Yeah, I think the landing or arrival stories, we kept going back and forth on the name, but the arrival stories were something that keeps getting asked for. So that was a really good uh, add-on for us to do. And hopefully we hit all the stretch goals and I can write them all. Um, so I think um, that's, that's, that's something that I, I know people have asked for, but I never really thought people would buy. Because, <laughs> yeah, I just I, I've seen other books in the marketplace do like the ancillary side characters novels and and they always just don't don't sell very well so i've always hesitated to do it but for you guys can bug me about it so let's try on the kickstarter and see if it gets enough funding um for it and uh we're, we will put it for sale on the website but it's going to be marked up higher than what would be on the kickstarter so i think it's gonna be 10 bucks for the ebook and the audiobook's going to be 15. So if you get it on the Kickstarter, you're getting it less than you buy it when it goes retail. Um, but, but you guys have seemingly loved it, you know, from what we've seen so far, people pledge. Most of you guys have, have jumped on board for that add-on, which, which I think is great. And I, I think that shows <laughs> that you guys weren't just all talk. You definitely wanted to see those stories. Um, yeah. So. You made me a believer because I didn't believe. I was like, eh, <laughs> no, what? No, people say they want it, but they're not going to buy it. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so that, yep. that's been super cool. Um, you know, similarly with the patches, you know, we really wanted to be able to get more patches out there last time. The logistics of the way we did it last time was just super bad. I think there's still some people out there trying to get their patches or don't know how to get their patches. And if that's the case, please feel free to reach out to us either through the previous Kickstarter um, or directly through the website um, if you're still missing your patch. But, you know, I think the way that we did it this time by making them an add-on ensuring that you get five through the add-on i think is a huge change and a huge difference and uh you know we've seen you know qu quite a few of you guys also pick up on that add-on for those that are getting the print books um and have that opportunity to have that level of an add-on um so i think that's awesome Lo we're gonna love seeing more of those out in the wild definitely want to see pictures you know once people start putting those wherever they're gonna put them um so again super thankful for you guys uh really supporting the hard work that goes into obviously the story writing, but everything else that we're doing as well, uh, to make sure that this is just a kick-ass, um, Kickstarter for you all. And I think, I think it's exceeded Tamer 8's Kickstarter already on the, or yeah. on the first day, right? I yeah. think so. Um, so, I think we, beat, so. we beat last one's numbers already. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think in backers and in money. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think so. that, uh, I think a combination of everything that we've done. Um, again, we have more fans from last year to this year too. So that's obviously been a huge push. And a lot of that is from you guys um, leaving really good comments when we do mention the book, um, you know, championing us on other places like Reddit and what have you. So again, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Please keep doing that. Uh, it is super helpful um, to make sure that we just maintain visibility uh, as we go through this. Um, yeah, that's, that's so useful because we're not on Amazon. I'm not on Amazon anymore. So when you guys... Uh... Mention the Reddit groups, the Facebook group, and then everyone's like, well, where can I find his books? So you guys tell the website, and then people were like, but it's $10 a book, and you're like, but they're worth it. You buy them, you'll love them, right? That really helps me out a ton. I super appreciate that because, uh, you know, I worry that my career is over when Amazon banned me, but uh, that didn't happen. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> doing pretty good. Everything is turned out totally fine, and um, 
you know, I, I think uh, it really helped having book funnel around and then book funnel gave us a way to do the audiobooks and that helped. And then a bunch of authors were asking about audiobook guild and, or, you know, trying to make something like that. So everyone had their individual store and we, we did that. And just so you guys know, Rob's the guy that builds all the websites and he does all the, uh, all the Facebook marketing stuff for me. So, and he maintains all like the backend stuff for audiobook guild and he helps uh, Eric Ball and Logan Jacobs out with, with their shit too. Yeah. So, cause we, cause they basically just paid us to do their, their systems yeah. on the back end. <clears throat> so whenever something's broken, it's my fault is basically what he said. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. If you do, you do send it in a, a, you know, message in when you see something wrong or something's yeah. going on, just say, damn it, Robert, what did yeah, you do? That's, that's my web guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a couple people in here asking for a Oraculous story. We talked about that. Um, may, yeah. Maybe in, in a future. Um, That's Rob. Rob, you asked for that a ton. You're like, we should we, do Oraculous story. Had, I'm like, nah. Both, no. both myself and uh, our, the main art guy, Jason, like also love that character. Um, you know, he, I think he stuck with everybody, you know, being, you know, how kind of cool he, he was in book one. And then he was just gone, right? Like <laughs> we yeah. didn't get to have you know, you know, his story, because he, he was obviously must have been a huge badass back on his own, uh, his own planet. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I think we kind of see, I think, a lot of his arrival story. I don't I don't get the sense that he was there very long when we meet him in book one. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, yeah, like it's definitely something that we've been trying to get Mike Scott to do. But, you know, whether that happens in the future don't know it's not going to happen as part of this kickstarter i'll just tell you that right now we got we've got plenty of other opportunities uh to to get the landing stories for for the women which i think um obviously just connect to the story more consistently um and i think uh they'll just be a huge value add uh to however many we are able to do as part of this kickstarter um i, I mean you guys are killing it right now like it's very possible that we're going to get all the ones that we have planned and done and, and, and incorporated as part of this Kickstarter. And that is going to be freaking awesome. So again, thank you guys for jumping on this so soon, so quickly, the, uh... so far, you know, and, uh, you know, tell two friends to tell two friends, uh, that, you know, how awesome this story is. Um, and, uh, let's, you know, let's see what we can do. There's a couple of, uh, hidden ones that you guys can't even see right now as far as um as far as some of what some of those stretch goals are there's a couple other ones that are way deeper out there um that you guys have been asking for for a while that will be uncovered if we can get up there um so you guys can see what that potentially is um it's not something that would create require a lot of development and, and time and effort on our time but um yeah, it'll be interesting if we get there and, and see your guys' reaction once it gets unveiled, if it gets unveiled. Cool, yeah, we're uh, we're almost to the two additional not safe for work digital paintings. Yeah. And then adding Sheila's arrival story. Oh, no, it's Trell's. Trell's arrival, arrival story. That's going to be fun to write. And then we're doing a, a group, a, a photo of the uh, original tribe. That's good. Yeah, the artist artist is working on that. I just I just sent him the thing today. Very nice. Hello, the Quaro story. Yeah, uh, Alan, we saw we saw your <laughs> your message when when you didn't quite make it to get that thousand dollar tier. Uh, saw a couple other people too that were uh, upset uh, that that they you know didn't notice in time to to be able to pick up that tier. But uh, you know there'll, there'll be more of those in the future ones. You just got to be yeah. ready. Um, yeah. uh, last time I don't think it got picked up till almost the end. Um, but this time around, yeah, the other, the other two times was like the first day it got nabbed. And then I think for book eight, it was like almost toward the end. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it was just gone instantly this time. Yeah. That's all right. Um, and, and I think, I think the person that, and I, I still have another call with that, the person that did the, the overlord for eight, cause we, we did a, a brief talk about the, the outline we're going to put in the book. And then I have like the outline pretty much complete now. So I'm going to talk to him on Thursday and go over the outline. I've started putting some work in the first chapter and he's got some ideas and stuff. And I, I, I do use whoever, whoever wins that overlord thing or pledges for that. Like I do, like I sit down, I'm like, this is what I'm thinking for the book. What do you think? Do you have any ideas? Do you want me to do anything? Uh, and uh, what, uh, you know, I think of the 
three people that have done it, everyone's had awesome ideas, like really cool shit that they want to put in that I've taken notes of and I've tried to put it in there. And it's, they made the book like way better. I think the guy, the guy that did book seven or was it six for, for seven, he wanted all this jinx stuff. And that's when I came up with the idea of the, uh, uh, Victor going back to the camp with Jinx to get um, his hat and he jumped in the well and those guys, all that entire whole scene wasn't even going to be in the book until that guy was like, I really want a Jinx scene. I started thinking about like, hey, what if I did this? And the, the guy was like, oh my God, that'd be so great. I would love that. You know, so yeah, it, it, it was, it's one of my favorite scenes I think I've ever written is just when Victor was stuck in the down in the well with, with Jinx and they had to figure out how to get out of there and stuff and Jinx pulled this you know, hero mode and kicked ass and and you know, because of what he said, I'm always thinking like, how can I get Jinx to do some cool shit in this book? Because I know that guy really liked it. You know, so it, it, it definitely, you know, if you're a fan of the series and you got a thousand bucks, it's it's a it's I think it's a fun thing to do because you you do get to sit on the phone with me and talk with me, and then when I send you the parts of the book, you can leave me feedback and send me emails and tell me what you think about it, what you want to do, and you know, not saying I'm going to write exactly the book that you want, but like I definitely take all the feedback I can get and and uh, we we uh, brainstorm ideas with my editor. Mm-hmm. Aaron Gonzalez asked, would you ever consider a spinoff or a simple sequel to Lion's Quest? No, it, I don't think it's like worth doing anymore. I think the story ended in a really good place and the series never sold well enough to really uh, you know, justify doing any more. Like like, you know, for example, like Viking Rimsmith book one sold like exponentially more than Lion's Quest stuff ever did. So at certain points in the series, it's like I just kind of whiffed the concept or it just didn't catch on or something. And I know what I did wrong in Lion's Quest. I've talked about it a bunch. Um, but uh, it's just easier to do a new concept that I think will work. And I, I have like a really – I really have a good sci-fi concept I want to do. I have a post-apocalyptic concept I want to do. Um, I really want to work on the Drow stuff. And I got to finish like Dragon Slayer and Death Ship and – I'm going through uh, Death Trip right now and revising the versions to add more sexy scenes in them for the narrator. Um, and the narrator is almost done with book one. Um, the new guy, we're using uh, Jack from Actors Everywhere, and he's doing a really good job on it. Um, who's who's the woman that's doing that, Rob? Do you know? Uh, I do not know off the top of my head. Okay. All right. But yeah, Jack sounds great on it. Um, so but I'm, she I'm sounds good with... too from from yeah. what I listen to. So it's it, yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I'm I'm super excited to get that. That series back up and moving again. I know, again, a lot of you guys have been asking for Death Ship for a while, too. Um, and uh, in talking with Michael Scott, there's there's quite a few more books in that series that he, that you want to get through, right? So. Oh, yeah, because Seymour has all these upgrades and shit. I want to start to dip into those and um, explore the like the, the relationship between them. I mean, there's just a lot of shit I want to do. And so if I, you yeah. know, Lion's Quest, I'm like, I love that series. It, it, I loved writing it. I learned a lot when I did it. I know I made some mistakes, but I've just kind of got to like, I, it's in a place where, you know, if you want spinoff stuff, you could just imagine. Same thing with Star Justice. Everyone's like, oh, you do more Star Justice. I'm like, no, it's, you can write your own fan fiction in your head. <laughs> like it's, it's done. <laughs> there will be many more adventures. They're going to kick more ass. You can just imagine that yourself. I got to like come up with new things that I yeah. want to do. I want to finish Viking Room Smith and I want to finish Monster Empire. I want to finish Death Smith. I want to finish Dragon Slayer. Uh, uh, Dragon Lair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, Space Knight, getting get oh books. Space Knight, yeah, yep. Yeah, I want to work on Space Knight. I think we're only like three or four books away from finishing that. Yeah, that's near the end. Um, yeah, and then I then there's new stuff. I, I, I'm really excited about the sci-fi concept I want to do, and that's going to be a short series. It'll just be three or four books. Yeah. If I can get that done, and then ideally I have, you know, Tamer, you know, I'm working on and Monster Empire, um, and then I can start work on the Drow stuff. Um, and then when when the audio writes for destroyer come back to me i can start working on the last four books for destroyer um and that, i mean by that point the the video game will be out for a while and i'll probably make a bunch of money off of that and then we'll do you know the idea is we'll do video games for tamer one and two and then we're gonna start do a star justice video game and we're gonna do a monster empire video game uh you know we might do um we, we might do a lion's quest video game at that point you know we'll, we'll see um, I've always really, really loved the whole Ultima Underworld type thing. I think that like lends itself well to a Lion's Quest storyline, you know. Um, so that might be cool. Uh, but yeah, I th the the video game stuff is working out really good, and the market's just so much bigger for video games. Like it's it's just crazy how many more people read to play video games and read books. Um, and I, you know, the, the issue though with video games is this barrier to entry and stuff. So I'm able to 
you have a team and they're working on it and I can't show you guys everything they're working on, but I've showed a little snippets here and there and it, it just looks really good. The team's super committed. They've all read the books. They all understand the vision. They're all just super into it, excited. Uh, and then in September, we're going to go to Thailand and we're filming all the motion capture stuff with uh, Chris and Jessica. So that's going to be awesome too, because we're going to have Jessica basically reading all the lines for all the women as they're standing around the cave around the fort. And she's got to kind of act with like all the different characters and do all the different voices and act all the, the motion stuff. So they're, they're super looking forward to it. It's going to be really great. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've purchased full motion, like high quality motion capture suits. Uh, we're doing uh, facial expression capture. Yeah, with Every these like helmets, like the helmet it mounts on, it has like a phone in front of their face. So like they t look around, they talk, and they move, yeah. and it captures their eyes and their mouth and their nose, and it's freaking awesome. It's such cool technology. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. Obviously, it's moving at the speed of video game, but um, it's going a lot faster than than I actually thought it was going to, yeah. um, which is great. Yeah. Uh, but they're again, like Michael said, they're just super dedicated and they're super into it which I think is why we're seeing such good movement on the project as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be an adult video game. There's going to be sex scenes in it. There's going to be romance in it. It's going to just going to closely follow the Tamer storyline. We're actually, we have to add to add a little bit more than what's in the books. So the first game is going to be the first two books in storyline. Yeah. Um, so it'll take all the way up to the point where they find uh, right before they get Leopold and Emerald. Um, yeah right after they beat the Utah Raptors, that's where it's going to go to. But yeah. I do have to add a little bit of dialogue here and there, some backstory stuff, uh, just as Victor talks to the girls, because a lot of the novels just don't... There's so much internal dialogue with Victor making choices and stuff that just, just doesn't lend itself to playing a video game because you just play the video game and you do those things automatically. Um, so having the... We're going to have to add dialogue of, of basically the women talking to each other and a lot more backstory stuff. It doesn't really come up in the novels until much later. Right. And again, since you guys are going to be in control of Victor through this story, you know, we, we have to make it engaging and we have to make it fun. So there's a level of questing and there's a, a, a level of battle mechanics and relationship mechanics that yeah. we're actively thinking through and, and going down the process. And obviously we'll have a testing phase at some point and, um, you know, we'll be leaning on you guys first and foremost to to do yeah. some of that beta testing you know we're, we're not close to beta testing so don't get too excited right now but you know we are going to be opening it up to to a handful of folks yeah. um to get your feedback um so just keep that in mind especially if you've ever done video game feedback before or bug testing in any sort um you know get ready to raise your hand you know when we ask yeah yeah the game's gonna be very similar to like uh, mass effect or 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 Batman Arkham Asylum type games. Um, it, it's not going to be like Ark Survival in that you have like an open world and you kind of do your own thing. Um, that You follow the plan that Victor makes up in the books. And you as a player, Victor, so Victor says, hey, we're going to do this and this and this. So every day you have to get food, you have to get water, and you have to get supplies to build the fort. And you have to make investments in technology to make all of those things easier at the cost of doing that thing right now. So you have to kind of figure out, like, do I go get water this morning with Sheila or do I go get more clay to make pots to hold more water so I can not so I can skip days getting water because I got to build the fort. So that's pretty much the mechanics behind the game is making the decision. Do I need to get water or food or do the fort? And there's not enough time in the day to do everything that you want to do. It's not an open world scenario. There is a timer because, you know, the orange birds are coming. And then after that, the Utah Raptors are coming. So there is a ticking clock, uh, very similar to uh, Dead by Daylight, if you guys have played that video game, where you only have, they're, they're stuck in a mall, I think, in the video game. He only has X number of days to get the shit done to, uh, to get out of the mall because the zombies are attacking. So that's very close to kind of the setup for this game. You know, you only have so many days to do the thing. So a lot of it's just going to be like trying to make investments in the technology, investments in weapons, doing all these things to develop so that you can get the fort built in time while also date simulation romancing the women getting them things like the women want different stuff like you obviously building the fort is going to get you um uh romance points with the women we're calling those respect points so you're gonna get respect to the women just doing the daily things but then they're gonna be like little quests that they want you to do like galmine wants a certain kind of herb gathered so if you find that herb she gets bonus respect points you know if you kill a certain badass raptor 
the Sheila gets you more respect points. If you bring Trell, like you find plans or designs to build things, Trell will get more respect points. Kasseri wants like soap or dyes. So there's all these things that you can get more respect points. Um, and the game becomes more difficult as you try to get and earn all the different respect points for the women. So you could do one play through the game and get all the romance for all the women. You're totally fine. But if you want to unlock outfits or additional sex scenes or different date sites, then you have to replay the game and you have to do all the different tasks in excellence and really beat the timer to unlock all those new and interesting scenes with the different women. That's how we're kind of trying to make it. So it has a lot of replay value and a lot of different things that you can do um, with that. But I definitely don't want some sort of open world game where you guys spend like 3000 hours playing the game, building different forts and stuff. Like I, you know, I really liked games where I know I could start the game play through it, finish it. It was done. That was a great experience. Now move on to the next game, you know? For for you open world bros, I did try to fight that fight and I lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Rob was like, Rob was, Rob's, how many hours do you have on arc, Rob? Like 2,000. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and that's low for some people. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I'm still super excited for the game too, right? It's, it's still yeah. going to be really cool, really unique. Uh, especially for the genre, right? Um, because again, most adult games are literally just adult with cutscenes, right? We we want this to be a game. We intend for it to actually be able to stand on its own and be on consoles without the adult content. And so that means it has to actually be fun, right? And yeah. not and not just you know alone time. <laughs> um, yeah, you're gonna need a, a computer PC with Steam to get the explicit version. We'll do. Uh, uh like a playstation xbox and epic version but they won't have the we can't have the not safe for content in those yeah um because they just won't they won't let us do them i think we can get pretty we can some faded black scenes but you won't be able to do like i want you know like you can choose the position that you want and you can replay the scenes and have you know and you can basically do like the the fuck simulation um and the pc you could do that but we can't do that on any other platform so you you definitely want to have or or i we're gonna have a link to download directly from us because steam takes like 40 percent or something fucking bullshit so you buy it directly off our platform yeah and um then we get all the money which is good uh um, yeah and the taming options are gonna be story driven so it's not like you go out there and you choose whatever stuff to, to tame the story is gonna be like like oh there's hope like just how it happens in the book there's hope she's there you go and tame her then there's like the the chase scene and all that stuff and then you get you get bob and um, then you get Sunny and Cher and, and the trikes, like all that stuff. It's going to fall the story. So you don't, you, we're not going to have like an open, you just go out and tame whatever dinosaurs you want. Um, the story is going to set it up since you tame it following the book. And a couple of reasons why we did that. One is we, I really, really wanted to just follow the story of the book. And then two was um, budget wise, trying to create some sort of taming system that made sense that wasn't completely and totally ripping off arc. Um, and then the modeling and all that stuff, we were just like, it was going to be beyond the budget and the scope of what we could do within the next few years. So, I mean, and I, and I really kind of didn't want that. Anyways, like I, I didn't really want, like I said, that open world kind of do whatever you want, build whatever fort you want stuff. I just wanted like, let's follow the story and just tell a really good story and have the romancing options for the women and, you know, do it that way. And if I looked at, if I look at the market, Right now, there just there still aren't any games really. Com there aren't really any harem games, and they aren't competing with story, and they're not doing any of this stuff. So I really feel like this is, you know, kind of like the whole book genre back six years ago, where there's no one doing this stuff. And then I wrote Destroyer; they did really good. Will wrote Super Sizzle Superheroes. E. William Brown had his Daniel Black series, and just blew up because oh wow, guys like having sex with a bunch of women. Who you know who knew. <laughs> you know but there's nothing like that in video games right and most a lot of men play video games so i i i, I think it's gonna be a huge hit and really successful and to bring a lot of people into the, the the books and the audiobooks and that that brand too and we'll read my other books yeah um and and one of the the, the kind of end goals we have is you know, to make all the video games but one of the ips we want to do a an adult MMO type thing where it's more of an open world type thing, but there is adult type stuff you can do with the other players or with NPCs, you know, and some things we got there, again, there's no competition. No one's doing anything like that. Um, I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, MMOs just do really awesome. Uh, even, even ones that catastrophic that fail right now do really good. 
Um, and I, and I, again, I, I, I'm, I'm a gamer enough to know some shit is bullshit. Like microtransactions are bullshit. You know, like I would, I would rather just have like a monthly fee type thing, like old school. Wow. Um, you know, so that the servers can be maintained with that. You know, I don't like microtransactions. I don't like all that other bullshit, the pay to win stuff. <clears throat> you know, I, I think, I think if, if you make a good enough MMO, people will pay their 15 to 20 bucks a month to just subscribe and play it. Even uh, if there's other free options out there with the microtransactions. Yeah. A couple of people asked, are we going to do DLC or have a second game? Uh, I think we've talked both directions. I think right now we're, we're leaning toward second game, right? Yeah, it'll be a second game. If the first one does good, which we yeah. think it's going to do good. Uh, the add-ons we're going to have will be additional outfits for uh, the girls. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're probably going to include a bunch of different outfits in the game. So when you, when you hit things in the game, certain achievements, unlocked, get outfits. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, uh, we're, we're going to have a designer working full time on doing outfits um, just because it's a thing that people have asked for and what, and they're in, in other games too. So, you know, we'll do an outfit every week or so and you can pay five bucks or whatever for it. Or I mean, we haven't figured the price or anything like that, but that's, that's something we'll definitely do. And, and those will carry over into all the future Tamer games that you would buy. Yeah, but the idea is that we we're playing on, you know, 20 books in the Tamer series. So that's at least, you know, if we do two books a game, that'll be 10 games. Uh, but they'll probably make it shorter than that eventually. Uh, yeah. They'll probably, I mean, I imagine we'll have six games and that'll be, we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to condense the story into that. Um, for Taking it back to why we're here, because uh, I know we've got a couple of people come in while we've been talking about the video game. Again, thank you guys um, for being here and supporting the launch of Tamer King of Dinosaurs book nar book nine. I don't know what book narn is. Uh Tamer of King of Dinosaurs <laughs> book nine um over on uh uh Kickstarter. If you haven't uh pledged, please uh, at least go take a look at it. See if there's something that uh you know tickles your fancy. Um we've got a lot of new things going on this time with with add-ons for uh, arrival stories that we're doing. We've already got two unlocked. We're going to be writing one. Or Michael Scott's going to have to write one for her. <laughs> She'll be writing many like. so far. And we hopefully I get the trail one. That'll be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think for sure we're going to we're going to get quite a few of them yeah. um, that you're going to have to do. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I'm excited for those. Everybody else obviously is, seems to be excited for them. We're getting most people backing um, or adding those to their to their uh, pledge, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, but again, in general, you guys, thank you. You know, Michael Scott and and me would not have a job <laughs> with without you know without you guys and without your support. Um, and you know, your 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 love for the story and for its characters over the years has just continued to to impress everybody on you know on this side of the screen. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That voice in your head is Rob. That's my uh, assistant marketing guru guy. He does all the Facebook ads, builds the website make sure all the audiobook stuff goes as any runs uh, audiobook guild. Yeah. So, so yeah, again, um, you'll never see me. Yeah, he does all the cool graphic stuff too. Like I, I would just be doing like a Facebook live stream here. <laughs> so, uh, and so question about the game. It's going to be a solo game. It's not, a, it's not a multiplayer. It is a thing. It's happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's the thing. Uh, the, uh, we should have, the cinematic trailer done <laughs> within the month. We got a rough draft of it, um, making a few corrections and stuff to it. Um, it's always, it's really interesting with this development process because I'll get shown something and I'll be like, well, I don't like this, that, the other thing, all these things. They're like, well, it's not in Unreal yet. And all those things will be fixed once we put it in the engine. And I'm like, okay, but I don't put in the engine <laughs> and they're like well we can't put in the engine because you haven't approved it yet and i'm like okay but like, so it's just it's been taking a lot of work um to just just to figure out like i don't know how a video game is made so a lot of it's just talking to this team and trying to figure out like how they do things and develop things and the yeah. process for basically the draft and revision process on all the various art assets and storyline stuff um it's been really just kind of an interesting thing to mm -hmm. to work through uh, well, somebody had a very important question. Where did it go? Zach George wants to know how long your hair is at the moment. Oh, my hair is freaking long. It's really long. <laughs> so we can take it off here. Yeah. It is, it is amazing. Yeah, 
we're getting pretty pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My wife says it makes me look younger. There you go. It, it gets the the tangles in it though, man. Like, it I, it does. I need like my my, my yeah, hair is oh, about oh. the same length as Michael Scott's yeah. right now, and I use I'm so used to having short hair, and it is I don't yeah. know how females deal with even longer hair than this. It's insane. No. Um. Uh, James, uh, James Smith mentioned, and we should mention this too, that one of the other things that we're doing this kicks this time around is we're actually putting backers names inside of both the ebook and the paperback versions, uh, that go out. Um, that is something that we thought we should do. And, and if, again, if, if you guys like it and it doesn't take up a ridiculous amount of real estate in the back of the book, um, this time around. It is something that will probably be continued because I think, or we think it's important that you guys are, are getting some level of credit, um, or because it's due obviously, um, especially for, you know, being willing to back something that doesn't even exist, right. Put money towards something that doesn't even exist yet. And trusting us, um, to just do, or trusting Michael Scott more than anybody, um, to do, you know, um, an awesome job at getting you the story and continuing the story in a, in an exciting and, um, consistent manner. That's just gonna, you know, watch bring you back for more and more. Yep. Yeah, and Rob's really good about that because I'm like not that good with marketing. I'm just like I'm just gonna write the book and whatever. <laughs> people, people want it, they want it. Rob's like, well, maybe you should like put the names in the back. I'm like, ah, they don't care if their names in the back of the book. And he's oh, like, yeah. no, bro, yeah. like they kind of do. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You, you, know, you also didn't it. think people cared about sales. So. Yeah, yeah, I would never do sales on books. And I was like, hey, just do a sale every once in a while. Let's see what happens. And, you know, I think a lot of when I do a sale, you guys try a series that you haven't tried before, <laughs> you know, so that's good. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of sales, for those like three of you that probably don't have all the Tamer books already, um, book one through seven in any format is 25% off on the website right now. Um, so if you're missing any for any reason, you want to pick up the paperback versions um, and don't want to pay, you know, for the signed versions that are in the Kickstarter right now, as an example, uh, go check that out. Or, you know, it's a good time to uh, tell other people to go check it out. Um, obviously, book one in both ebook and audiobook are still free and will remain free forever. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's a good time to get people hooked at a, at a, at a discounted rate. Yeah. Yes, jazz music does play when the wind blows through my hair <laughs> and then Paul asks, are you doing better since you left Amazon? Oh yeah. Um, I'm not making as much money like per year, but like I'm making more per book on my own writing. Oh. Um, and then I, I do, I'm doing like freelance editing work and then the audiobook guild stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm making close to what I made on Amazon, but I'm, I'm working way less. I think I'm probably only working like 50, 60 hours a week versus right. a hundred, 120. I was, I was fucking breaking myself to write those all those books i was three books a month you know um uh, so uh yeah so it's really it's really i mean every I, everyone should try to go direct um i mean i understand amazon's still a huge marketplace but i think over the last couple of years amazon's removed the also bought banner so authors are making less and less and less money um, and the one good thing about having my own store, my own platform, is I can email everyone when the book is out, and then they know the book is out and they can buy it. And Amazon does not do that. They very rarely send follow emails. Very rarely tell readers a new book is out. And they're really fucking bad at their job, you know. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a shame. Um, uh, Charles asks, will we get random books with extra artwork done that has been slipped into older autograph books? Not exactly sure what that question is. He's talking about the, the art my kids do when I'm signing the books. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, totally. I think I think my kids will, um, when I we go to sign, I'll full fly to Orlando, we'll do that. Man, that was, a uh, that was, I, I, it was like, f I think four and a half hours, I think I did it all. Yeah. I signed all That's those insane. books. Yeah, and my, I, my, I was okay, actually. I was like, I was like, my hand didn't hurt that bad, but mentally I was like, fucking fried man like i don't man i was like <laughs> blinking and sitting in the car my wife was driving me back to the hotel and i was like what the fuck just happened man i feel like i got <laughs> punched in the face um because i was like I, it was just non-stop people putting like someone put a book in front of me i would sign it there was a stack of books they'd shove a stack of books at me and sign someone would rip it from my hands sign rip it from my hands sign rip it from my hands like i was just going i signed my name so many fucking times in a row 
Yeah. And then we were just done. And, and ah, fuck, dude. I, I don't <laughs> I know. Like... <laughs> I don't know how your hand or your wrist didn't hurt. No, it, it didn't. I was, I was, I, 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 I mean, I, I kind of, I moved my position. I was standing up. I was sitting down. I was like kind of moving around a little bit. Um, you know, and then, uh, my, so my editor drove out because he lives in, uh, Vero Beach, so, which is close to Orlando. So he drove, it's like an hour and a half away. So he drove out to meet me there. So my editor was there. My wife was there. My two kids. And once we kind of got set up, like we didn't need my wife and my two kids. So they just did a bunch of artwork stuff on the inside of the books. Um, and quartermaster, those guys are so fucking cool, man. They, they like their whole lunchroom was filled with my books and everyone was coming by and saying, yeah, like, hi, Michael Scott, thank you so much for like using us. And they're just like the nicest people, man. Yeah. Um, um uh, how are your sales from audiobook guild doing how's your effort to recruit more authors to your platform uh that's a good question so i think we're i mean i i, I think it does good um i i'm not it's weird about the recruiting the authors thing because i'm kind of not really looking for authors i need i need an author that is um has a library of books out and is still continuing to write yeah. Um, and you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of what I need. And there's not a lot of authors out there. You get these authors that'll make a book or two and then they quit. Um, but it's very rare that I'm like, an author is like, I'll do a book every month or two. And it is willing to take the risk to move from Amazon. Like we just got Jeff on the platform. What, what's, yeah. what's Jeff? Uh, Jeffrey Kohanic. Yeah. And his, his and his stories are great. Right. And yeah. One of the things, again, we're just being super cautious with the platform. We want to make sure anything we put out there is is quality, has quality narration. You know, Jeff came on board. Um, he only has single narration, which is, again, not normally what we're looking for. But it was Travis, Baltry, right? So it's like, okay, obviously, this is good, good narration, right? Um, and uh, they're older books, but, you know, there's 12 of them, to Michael Scott's point, right? Um, and there's a novella that's free um, a, as kind of a, a prequel to the entire series on the site right now. And so that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, it doesn't have to be a harem. It does have to be, again, geared toward a male audience, right? Um, so, you know, it's still got to be action filled. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to have a lot of interest, but, it, you know, it helps the story move along, I think, in general, always from a balancing perspective. Um, so, I mean, so that's what we're looking for. Um, but to Michael's point, the, the biggest hurdle is, you know, people are scared to come out of Audible or to, to even just come out of being exclusive with Audible, right? Um, yeah. Even knowing that they're getting shafted because of everything that's out there, which that, that, that just proves they're just not making, they're just getting ripped off by Amazon, basically. Yeah. Um, it's scary for them. It's very scary for them. Um, so we need... You know, we need you guys to kind of vote with your wallets, if you will. You know, when we put people out there um, like Jeff, um, who again, th it's not a harem book. It's a fantasy book. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of a current problem with Audiobook Guild is that you know, the majority of the books on their harem. That's the majority of the people buying from that site. Um, but you have to trust us that anything that we put on that site, I've listened to personally uh, because that's what I'm making sure happens. And. Uh, if uh, I listen to a shit ton of audiobooks across the board, right? So, yeah. um, if it's on there, it's because I believe it should be on there. And I think it's going to be fun for anybody that's currently an audiobook guild listener, um, yeah. and any future audiobook guild listener. Yeah. I, I think the issue is the way Amazon's really cornered the market with Audible. It's if, if you are exclusive, you only make 40%. So, it's it's just so crazy and it's predatory because they count a borrow in KU as a sale. So to whisper sync, you can borrow a book in KU for free and then whisper sync it for like four to eight bucks. Yeah. So the author makes a dollar off of that. And and I can understand, you know, fans being like, well, I only got I paid a dollar for this audiobook. Yay. But like you're not gonna get any more audiobooks if <laughs> an author is only making a dollar off an audiobook that costs them four grand to record. They can't afford to do it anymore. You know, like, and, and we're seeing that a lot in Harem, uh, that genre is these guys can't make these audiobooks anymore. Um, Podium used to give really good advances for books in our genre. And now they're like, they don't want to do it anymore. You know, they don't want to be in the genre anymore because it just doesn't make any money. Um, so, and another thing, so if you go, if you, but if that's exclusive, if you're exclusive with Audible, they take 60% just for having the website. They don't even fucking pay to get the book recorded. 
They're just taking 60% because they fucking can. It's outrageous. And if you're not exclusive with Audible, they take 75%. So the author or the publisher only gets 25%. Can you fucking believe that? It's insane. So if someone is, so if a book is not exclusive on Audible and a customer w- gets it in KU and whisper syncs it and buys it for four bucks, the author makes like a dollar. It's just fucking terrible, man. It's yeah. so bad. And Audible doesn't tell customers new books are out. They don't tell the author what the email is. So like, so that's a different with Audible Guild is the authors make 70%. Is that right, Rob? 70%? Yes, 70%. So 70%. And I tell everyone the email addresses of the customers that get their books every quarter. So like, for example, Jeff, I'm like, here's the all the customers that got your stuff. Here's all the email addresses. And when when a new book comes out, we email all them. And if you want to email them, you can email them. Tell them you got the next book coming out because they're your fan. They bought your stuff on our platform. Yeah. And they make more money. So Jeff's really been smart. All of his ad spend has been to send people to Audiobook Guild. He's not sending anyone to Audible because he knows if he gets a customer for spending a dollar on Facebook and they come to Audiobook Guild and they buy it, he's going to get that email and he gets 70% of the sale, right? Which is way better than Audible. He would send someone, he would market and advertise and send someone to Audible and then he'd get 40% at best, you know, and he would never get their email address because they're Amazon's customer. And Amazon firmly believes, no, they're our customer. They came to our site to buy something on our website and they would have bought anything else but your book. So I just think it's a bunch of bullshit. And I don't like Amazon. For good reason. Um, yeah. Daniel Lamont, um, you know, we work with a, um, Actors Everywhere, which is uh, uh, actors that do all of our narration and they have a team and we pay them for the narration. Um, we ourselves are not brokers. We do not sell narration. And we've had quite a, quite a few people actually come to Audiobook Guild and say, "Hey, can you record my audiobook for us?" We're not, we're not that, we're not a that type of publisher, right? We're not, we're not doing that. We can give you, you know, I can give you their contact information. I can set you up with a meeting if that's something that you want to do. Um, but it is something that you're going to have to work out with them as far as price and who exactly you're working with. But their entire team over there is great. Right. Uh, they have different rates for different people. If you want Chris and Jess, you're going to definitely be paying more because they're Chris and Jess. But everybody over there um, is very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Audible gives a good, a good deal for authors. Yeah. Uh, but again, you can see guys where I'm being a little cautious because I want to make sure that um, <clears throat> yeah. we get the right authors in there. They're going to be producing really good content and keep, and keep producing it. And if they want to, uh, you know, market and sell the stuff. I, I, we just Dante, uh, Dante King just put his books up on there. He, he yep. did really good his first month. He's super happy. You know, if you spend any money on ads, he's going to send them right to Audiobook Guild. You know, um, and that'll that'll help all the authors on there. Is because if someone goes to buy an audiobook from someone they like and they're on the store, they're going to buy stuff from other people that are on there. Um, yeah. And I do feel like, and this could just, this could be Amazon screwing with things because they screw with things. But I do feel since Audiobook Guild has come out, I think Audible sales have suffered tremendously um, in that genre, in our in our hair kind of genre. Um, I just look at what people used to make and their views and the sales used to make. And then I look now that Audible Guild has been out for like two years and I look at what people are, what people make on Audible Guild. And I'm like, man, I, I can't imagine anyone's making enough money to continue recording books now. And that could be because everyone's going to Audible Guild, which would be awesome. But I think it's more just that Amazon is just not showing books anymore. They don't give yeah. a fuck. Yeah. You know? Probably a little bit of column A, a little bit of column yep. B. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, Alan's apparently willing to do some voice acting for free on DA. So they, they, they might got a starting point. Um, Rob, tell me about this shirt that we've got. Oh, yeah. So. The shirt. Um, I will put the link here again. Um, thank you to, uh, I think it was James uh, that had originally said that he bought it and that it was freaking awesome. Uh, I'm going to make sure Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua Jones. Um, but there you go. Uh, you can click on it, but it is kind of our, <laughs> our thought process on the design team was how do we make kind of like a rock band shirt, uh, for Tamer and specifically for, this Kickstarter as kind of like a, a cool conversation piece and something that would just look awesome to wear. Right. And so it's really kind of got like late 
80s uh kind of rock band vibes going with it it's all pixelated yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's Dude, it's pretty awesome. it's pretty freaking dope right like uh, i'm for sure gonna order one um you don't wear your own merch but i think in this case dude you isn't that would that be weird like no, i look at the shirt dude, like this thing looks freaking awesome but i'm like it's like it's like being in a band and you have you wear your own band t-shirt uh, like, that's that's fucking uh, weird isn't it i don't know i don't know <laughs> what do you guys what do you think is that weird like for me to wear my own shirt like i, I mean i'm not al ron kong right i don't have to like i don't have a, i don't have a shrine to myself in my house all right, right? All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> if you walked in my house you would have no idea i'm an author there's yeah. like no library hey. with books everywhere hey. i just i have a little cave dungeon with like weird looking keyboards yeah. and that's the you, only way you would know you do I'm have it on the back of your car though that's true well that's like an expensive for marketing <laughs> Well, that is true. You can't. It's just so I could expense my entire car for marketing. Yeah, well, that was good. That was good. And my accountant said it was cool. I could do it. I do that to my own car. Can I get a wrap? Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think the shirt looks cool. I would. Yeah, I would, no, it is. I would totally wear that if it wasn't my thing, and, it, it, and, I, and I wouldn't feel really weird. It's not weird, Mike. Don't say that. It's weird. I mean, it's weird for me. Cause again, I feel like I'm a I'm in like a band and I have my own band T-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I, I don't. I, I, this model is not excited at all. Look at this guy. He's not happy at all to be wearing the shirt. I'd be fucking look. Look at how bad this shirt is. I'd be like, what, he, yeah. This, I'd be flexing that's, my that's muscles. That's how rock that guy be, is, though. He I'd like, be like, he, I'd he be can't like, show emotion because to show emotion yeah. is weak and not cool. This guy. This guy is. This guy is so emo. There's not he, a lot of model choices. Okay. <laughs> Look at, look at him he's just like he is not he's like he's like no i won't eat my my cereal <laughs> he's looking away um, there go. this guy <laughs> uh there you go ryan I'll, I, I directed the link to your comment so you should be able to pick it up um but yeah no the shirt's dope um like i said i'm gonna probably pick it up i actually tried to do it on a tank top but it didn't look very good so yeah. uh, it just looks better on a on a dark tea. So that's yeah. what we went with. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, again, Joshua, thanks for bringing it up. Um, Joshua, you're a good commenter too. You comment all the time. Um, it's really appreciated. Um, so thank that's you. Exactly. He's made a wax. Yeah, I always <laughs> I, I always recognize him from your your pro, from your profile picture. Um, it's very it's very distinct. He just looks like mom told him some bad news. <laughs> like you got to do the dishes now. And he's like, mom, come on. I'm rocking this awesome shirt. I can't do the dishes. That's true. That's true. I'm like, I'm making a story of this guy's life. Like, why is he so sad? Wear this awesome shirt. I don't know. I wouldn't be sad. Uh, you're still awesome. stuck on the, the, the <laughs> yeah. model. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm just talking about Joshua. I'm like, Joshua doesn't look sad no, at all. No, I'm looking at this model, man. Like. All right, look away from the model. Yeah, no, he's, I'm like trying to figure out his deal. Look <laughs> Why are you so sad, bro? You need to read some harem books. I got some recommendations <laughs> for you. Badass dude, killing assholes and banging yeah, all the chicks, yeah. man. You will you will have a smile on your face the whole time. I guarantee it. Very uplifting, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting a little buzzed. I think I drank that whiskey too quick. <laughs> Yeah, I've been talking too much, so I haven't even been drinking. Yeah, you've been talking, I've been drinking. That's well, that's fine. It works out. It's probably yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, all right, what cool. series on the audiobook ser guild do you guys think is underrated? Oh man, um, oh, do, you should do. Right now, we're actually there's no, that's not a sale on audiobook guild. That's Logan's doing a sale, but uh, Evil Genius, um, is I think Logan has for sale on his site, so I yeah. would I would buy it there for less. That one has all of actors everywhere reading the whole thing yeah and it's super good yeah so and i think they have like four or five it's six, og actors six, everywhere too yeah so six six people or so reading yeah every character it sounds really good yeah smile it on's also really good it's yep. slept on yep. yep um yeah evil genius is good but yeah but yeah. get evil genius on logan's website it's for sale right now and oh, we don't have nathan, it for sale on the nathan, audio nathan thompson's challenger call series is yeah. super slept on yeah yeah um yeah, I read Nathan's Nathan series is super good. Yeah, I would definitely get pick those up. Um, it, we we he, he we really want to be able to do more of those. He's at like nine books written, and we've only got three audiobooks so far. What's um, another example of how Amazon fucking screwed him? His first book came out, made a, did really good, super super good, 
Second book came out with it. What Audible said there was an error on it or something. Yeah. And they never showed it to anyone. It just disappeared. So, and he's like, I lost all this money. I don't, you know. And so, he was one of the one of the first authors to talk to me. He's like, Hey, can you just make an audiobook store? Like, because I, I I I I can't sell this on Audible anymore. Yeah. I don't think I could do it anymore unless I find another way to make money off of it. So, I mean, like, like guys, for real, like, I, I know you love the audiobooks, but it costs a shit ton to have, you know, narrators read the books. Um, you know, it's it's such an interesting thing in, like, the industry. So, like, like people will write, like, authors will write books for free. Like, I wrote the first four Destroyer books for free. Like, I didn't make anything money off of them. And I was hoping I would publish them and get made and make money off of them. And I did. And I made money. And I was able to quit my day job. Like, I got super lucky. But... I know tons of authors that just write books and write books and write books and none of them make fucking money, but they keep on writing. And I'm like, man, like, why would you do that? But they're like, I just love writing, you know? And that that's kind of why Amazon and like the movie industry is able to exploit writers because there's so many guys and girls that will just do the job for free, but narrators will not narrate a book for free they will they they need to get paid it's actual like work it's not yeah. a hobby yeah. um so amazon has tried so many times to make a kindle unlimited type thing for audiobooks but the consumer will consume for free so much content for free an unbelievable amount of content for free and every time amazon has tried to make any sort of all you can eat um audiobook thing it's just completely cratered and every author has been like i had 10,000 people listen to my book and I made 10 bucks. No fucking thank you. Right? I cannot possibly make another audiobook with how much it costs. But there are plenty of authors who would be like, "Wow, 10,000 people read my book and I made $10. That's amazing. Yay! I'm so happy." But like, you know, I me personally like I'm looking for another job, you know? Like I can't I can't feed my family off that. So like I'm going to get another job, you know? Um so and I and I do kind of wonder sometimes about you know because I, I see these authors and some of them are in like the harem genre that like write book after book after book and they don't make any money and they just keep writing books and I'm like what are you like bro get a job man like just go like go go wait some tables or bust some tables or go get a retail job like w what are you doing man like you're working so hard writing all these books and you've never made a freaking you know thousand dollars off of it like you're you're better served to just go get a job but. Oftentimes they aren't married, don't have a family, stuff like that. So they can just indulge in their hobby. Um, but my point is writers just, a lot of these writers just, they don't look at it like a job. It's just their their hobby, their career, their love, and they're going to keep doing it. Well, I've always looked at like, I really like writing and I enjoy telling stories, but like it's it's got to make money or else I'm going to do something else with my time. You know, because I'm, I, I, at the end of the, the, the day, I, I, I am, I want to make money. You know, like my point is make money and provide for my family and do the things that I feel like a man should do for his family. And I'm, I'm very fortunate that I can get that done with writing, which I really enjoy it. But if I, if I couldn't make money of this, I would be picking up garbage cans or cutting down trees or whatever the fuck I could do to make a living, you know? So, um, Christopher, I don't think it's necessarily a challenge that you guys really like certain actors. Um, obviously it creates scheduling conflicts because they get popular and then, you know things like even with you know Michael Scott and everything else in the beginning, right? We he had Luke Daniels um, and um, what's the other guy's name that's super popular, Nick yeah. Fidel on the original stuff, right? But you know they just blew up to the point where one, it would take like three years to get anything done, uh, yeah. but but two, you know he was he became so good and so popular that his prices didn't make sense for the genre, right? Um, and, yeah, and that was and, and and like, hey, Luke and Nick, I I loved working with those guys, and they were they were awesome. And like, I I mean, I still call those guys my friends, and I, I bet if I call those guys right now, I'm like, I had a project for you, they they'd fit me in the schedule. Um, and and super talented guys, but it, you know, Luke was you know charging ten times more than Chris and Jess charge to do it, and he's booked for three months, like, and then Nick Nick prices was always less than luke's but he's still five times more than chris and jess and he's booked out three years so mm -hmm. it reached a point where it's like ah, you know and 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 the idea of having to me having a woman and a man read the parts together is just really really good 
And I know when they first started doing uh, Space Night, Alex and Marissa, there were some little things we kind of had to work out with them. It was like, I think it was like a second book that they, they did together. Uh, and we had kind of had to redo the first book of Space Night because I felt like he got Captain Cross like really wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I was picturing an old, grizzled, like kind of that. I, mean, I kind of told him like, like, go on YouTube and look up some Warhammer 40k shit, dude. Like, I that's what I'm looking for. Like old, grizzled, battered you know, dudes that have seen some shit, like not because he read the first read. I don't know. You guys have never heard the first read he did, but he did like yuppie British, like, <laughs> like uh piracy, like type of thing with, I was like, no, 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 man. Like, no, no. Like a um, grizzled old bear dude. Right. That's what I fucking want. And he changed all that shit. Um, and I think he got, he got really good within his first couple books. And now I read that series. Like listen, when I listen to the audiobooks for space, I'm like, okay, this is, this is better than, than, than I think what, what Nick did um, for it, yeah. just because we have Marissa there, and I think Alex got his stride kind of halfway through the first book. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, and it, it is important to note that they are again back on board for um, continuing Space Night, which is why we're Michael Scott's gonna be able to pick up the series again. That's a lot of what was holding us up, him up, continuing that series. Oh yeah, they were they were booked. They they said they were booked for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, you know, and then that's kind of that that time has passed. That could be because of audiobook guilds, or that could be because of the way Amazon's not showing the audiobooks, but uh now they're looking for work again. So Yeah, we're we're just stoked to be able to continue the story. I love that story. That's that's yeah. one that's actually probably my favorite series for me. So yeah. um that and um Monster Empire, because Monster Empire is just fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um so that is also again, if you haven't listened to the audiobooks for that, that shit is funny <laughs> so it's a good story too like you don't it but it's it's got that good mix of humor and action and storytelling that i think is is really really good and really really fun um you know kind of the reason i think you know a lot of people like dcc and dungeon crawler carl and stuff like that because it's kind of got that mix this has that mix in my mind and is in the genre um in the harem genre so it's just it's just really good it's just really good yeah no, we're we're using Alex and Marissa. They, they were they were engaged. They were booked up, and now they're not as booked up anymore. So I'm gonna start working on more Space Night. Yeah. Um, because I had the choice of like, okay, they're really booked, and I try should, do I re-record everything because they're so booked, yeah. or do I wait? And ended up the wait was not as long as I thought it was gonna be. So we're we're back on the the Space Night. Yeah, thing. I think I'm gonna do more this year. Um. Uh, Andy had a good comment. Well, that's how I feel about my art. I went to art school and everything. However, I felt that if I did it for money, then it would feel like work and my hobby wouldn't be fun to do anymore. It, uh, dude, I don't I don't feel that way. Like I, I love writing and I'm really happy I can make a living doing writing um, because I love it. But like you still got to make a living, you know, so I would I would not look at it like, well, if I think about how I make money with my art, then it's going to demean it. Like, no, dude, like be grateful and and humbled and happy that you can make money doing your art, but still like, you got to make the money, man. You got to pay the bills. You got to do those things you got to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think if we look at like, I, you know, this isn't very popular to say anymore because of like how we got, I don't know, get political and stuff like that, but like a man's job is to take care of a woman and raise a family, right? Like that's just kind of what we got to do. So you've got to be able to provide for your family. And if you do, if you could do that with your art, man, you're way above what a lot of other, you know, like what you can do with other stuff, right? It's just, it's just really, it, it's a great thing, right? Um, it's actually, fun. I've been at parties with people before, and they're like, they see my wife, and I'm like, oh, what, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a writer. And uh, then they look at my wife and like, well, what do you do? And she's like, I just, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I, uh, we homeschool our kids. And then they look at me and they're like you're a writer and i'm like yeah I do. <laughs> <laughs> like is he like they thought oh this guy is like writing books so his wife must make all the money right that's what they like they they think you know off the top of the head so like you know if you you can make money doing art for sure you know like i have a full-time art guy that does my typography and works on my art stuff you know like he's like you you can make money doing art for sure but you got to be willing to do the things for your art to make the money, you know, and you, and, and a lot of it is determining not looking at your fans, like your fans. Like I look at you guys like you're my fans, but I really look at you guys like you're my customers. Right. And I got to give my customers what they want. And if I don't give them what they want, they're not going to give me their money. And then I won't have a thing. Right. So I'm always trying to think about like what, how do, when I write a book, I'm like, what can I do to make my readers really happy with this story? 
You know, that's what I do all the time around my book. So when you're doing your art or any sort of, of thing that you do, you just always got to be thinking like, how do I make my customers happy? And a lot of writers get confused because they always think I want to write my book. I want to do the thing for me. It's my art. It's my thing. I, I'm doing this for myself. And you will not make any money or provide a living for anyone if that's how you look at it. You got to be looking at what do I, how can I take my art thing and use that to make money and have a more of an umbrella understanding of what it is you do and don't get so pigeonholed. Like I love writing so much that if the only way I can make money is writing Where Bear Erotica, I would probably be writing <laughs> Where Bear Erotica because I love, I, that's how much I love writing and telling stories. Right. Um, but I could all, I would also do other things. If I did, if I could, if I couldn't make any a living doing writing, well then I would do something else. Right. But like, I would still love, I would love to make a, a living doing writing. So if I only could make writing was doing Where Bear Erotica or writing romance books for women, then fuck yeah, I'm, I'm doing that shit. I'm going to have, I'm going to write the best damn Where Bear Erotica you fucking ever heard, <laughs> you ever read. That's what I would do, right? You know, because I don't care. I, I'm a writer, right? I'm not like, oh, I'm a writer and I only write these kinds of stories or like, you know, so if like I'm an artist, but I only want to do the things I want to do or only this little kind of segment of this thing, that's my thing, like. No, man, don't be like that. Just think of yourself as an artist. How do you make money doing art? Determine what the market wants you to do, and then you provide that for them, right? And you still get to say you're an artist and you do your thing. That's my that's my take on making money as an artist. <laughs> and now I'm going to drink some whiskey. Yeah, good job. Good job. Yes, Zach. Uh, Where Bear Erotica is coming around the corner. Just just wait for it. 2024. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. We've been going for about an hour, guys. We're probably going to wrap it up because I think Facebook starts kicking us off like 15 after an hour. I don't want to get cut off. Um, but again, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for supporting uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, for those of you who have, uh, thank you uh, for to you guys who are totally going to do it as soon as this video is over or this, uh, this live event's over. Um, thank you for supporting Michael Scott throughout the years um, and in doing so giving me a job <laughs> um but uh yeah just keep them coming keep your comments coming you know be active in the facebook group you know sh share why you like these stories elsewhere if you if you're on other social platforms um it does super super help a lot because you know to, again we told said this earlier but you know not being on amazon we, we lose a lot of visibility and we kind of rely on you and me obviously um to, to make sure we're maintaining that visibility but, um, you know, if everybody buys the shirt and wears it around, that's going to be helpful also. Um, but, um, apparently Mike Scott's not going to wear it. So you guys have to do it for I him. just feel so freaking weird, man. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's my own band shirt, you know? Um, know. maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I'll buy one for someone else. There you go. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. I should buy it. Can I, I can't even sign it though. Right. I should buy a shirt, sign it and send it to someone. You could. It just means yeah, you I could it easily one. could. Yeah, right. maybe good. we should do something like that. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll we'll look into that and figure out how cool. to do like a pseudo giveaway, not giveaway through Facebook because you're not allowed to do a giveaway. Yeah. Um, stupid. But in any event, uh, I will let Michael Scott do the final sign off, but I will say my thank you one more time, and uh, we'll t I'll talk to you guys next time. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate the love. Uh, yeah, and um. Yeah, and I'll also say I got to get to work. I got to write these books. I think you guys will be super happy with your rival stories. They're gonna be fun. I know. Uh, I don't think Jess is looking forward to it because she gets to do a bunch of solo work on it. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much again for the support with the Kickstarters. If you have any friends or if you're in Facebook groups or looking for fun entertainment, point them my way. I appreciate you all. I love you. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, clear.